Hey everyone, it's Tamara from 31 Palms Studio and today we're going to go over the basics of Canva use and how to use our templates to create amazing social graphics, email graphics, and more for your business. And we'll go over how to change colors, how to change the fonts, where to find those, how to upload your own images, and how to save the file for exactly what you'll need when you create your graphic. So hang on and we'll just jump right in. So let's get on with our Canva tutorial. Now if you purchase a template through 31 Palms, you'll get a download sheet like this. This is a PDF and you can open it with any PDF reader. And you'll have a link in a red box so that you can't miss it. And this will be the link to your template. And if you've gotten a Canva template from elsewhere, you might get the direct link. That's a big long Canva link. But either way, when you click this link, if you are already logged into your existing Canva account in your browser, it should automatically launch that into your browser. And if you are not, and you don't have a Canva account, it will ask you to create one. So since we already have a Canva account, I'll just show you what happens when we open this up. And we will be able to create our design. It'll just say a template was created by 31 Palms and was shared with you. Start designing now. And you would hit use template. And now we'll go back because we already have an account. But what if we don't have an account? If we don't have an account, we'll have to create one. There's absolutely no need to pay for a premium or pro account to use Canva through our templates. Some templates you'll buy will ask for the premium account. They might include fonts or images that you can only use with a pro account. None of our templates do because we don't want you to have to pay extra for the Canva account unless you would like to. Now we do include a link to start your free account. It is an affiliate link, so we do receive a small commission if you click this link. But if you do click this link, you will be able to create your own Canva account and it'll be prompted to do so at that point. So once you have clicked that link or you've just gone to canva.com, you'll be able to create your own account in which you would just hit sign up right in the right hand corner. And there's a couple different ways that you can sign up for an account. You can sign up using Google. So if you already have a Gmail or Google account, or you can sign up with Facebook, if you already have a Facebook account. It's pretty common these days that we have social logins. It just saves you the hassle of putting in your information. Who doesn't love that? Feel free to click on those. Or if you want the old fashioned sign up with email, you can go ahead and create your account that way as well. So just follow the prompts depending on what option you choose and your account will be created for you. So now that you're signed up, I'm going to jump back into my Canva account just to show you the backside a little bit. And we'll go over some other things in future tutorials. There's a lot of great features like the brand kit, content planner, etc. But for right now, we're just going to go over what it takes to edit a template and what you'll need to know to do that if you've never ever used this program before. And we can get into some of the more advanced stuff in future tutorials. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to know about Canva and what confuses you and what you would like to see a tutorial on and we'll definitely make that. So now we'll go back to our PDF for whatever template we purchased and we will click the link once we're logged into our new account so that we can again launch the template to open up in that account and we'll get the template was created for us and shared with us and would we like to start designing now. You can scroll through the template see the size and the option to use the template. Once we use it, we'll open it right up in Canva. So you can see an Instagram template, all of the pages are included in the same document, but you can download them separately if you don't want to create the whole thing today. So the basic things that we might want to do is change the text, font, and colors and photos. So that's just what we'll go over really quickly. So say we want to change this testimonial, we would click on the element itself and up here it's going to show us the current color. And to change the color, we'll just click on that and it'll bring up our color palette. And you can see all of your document colors. So this is every color that's used within this template. We have four colors that is used so far within this template. Brand colors we'll go into another time if we build our brand board. Default colors are just the most basic colors that most people might use. And we, what we'll want to do is pick a new color. So that will bring up the entire range of millions and millions and millions of colors. So you can pretty much pick any color that you want. Now right down here we have what's called a hex code. And if you have a brand established, maybe you've worked with a graphic designer, maybe you've gotten something somewhere else or off the internet, 
then you might know this six digit code. It's your hex code. It's every single color is going to have a hex code, as you can see. So if you have brand colors, you should know this code for every single color so that you can keep it consistent throughout every single platform that you use to create something for your brand, whether it's t-shirts, water bottles, you know, website, Canva, Photoshop, anything that you would like to use, you're going to need this color for and you want to keep it. And that's definitely the purpose of a brand board is so you can give this to your employees, your VAs, anyone that's going to need this, you can give it to and they should be able to find your color no matter where they are. So if you've got that, you can simply type or copy and paste it in here. If you don't and you don't really have a brand, and you're not sure yet, you can just pick whatever color you'd like and you can move the slider down here to change the primary color and then all the shades within that color you can refine up here so we'll just pick something for now pick that light blue then click off again and then if we want to change these stars we would do the same thing and as you can see the color you just used is now part of your document colors so if you want to make something else that color further down in the document you'll be able to do that so we're just going to pick a random color for our stars and you'll have to select each one and pick that color. Right. So now that's all set. And then our text, the color would be up here. We'll see our font size, text color, whether it's bold, italic, underlined, or lowercase or uppercase. Then we have how it's aligned, center, left, right, or justified, which means each side is aligned fully and the text stretches to fit that, bullet points, and our line spacing. But for right now, we're just going to go with text color. And maybe want to make it that same dark color. And then this one, we're going to make you know, just black, maybe. And then this is just a little accent. Shouldn't be too, too dark. Another fun thing you can do is click on the darker color and we do have opacity set to this, which is up here, this little checkerboard. And you can play with that to make things darker or lighter as well. And then last but not least, make our website a darker color too. So that's how you change the colors of one of the templates. So the next thing we can do is change our font. And our font is the style of text that we have if we don't love this one or we have brand fonts already established, we'd be able to use those. So you can go right over here to text and then highlight the, the text that you'd like to change the font of. So right now this font is Montserrat, which is one of my absolute favorite fonts, but that may not be your favorite font or it may not be your brand font. And that's another thing that you should establish just to keep things consistent because consistency is probably the most important thing when it comes to design for your brand and something people struggle with is having fonts and colors and everything all over the board so start to choose one or two fonts and three to four colors for your brand that you'll stick to and we'll definitely do more tutorials on how to do that in the future but i don't want to get off on a tangent I just want to show you how to change the font so over here on the side we have hundreds of fonts now I have a pro account. If you don't have a pro account, none of these ones with the little crown are going to be available to you unless you purchase a font license through Canva separately. But any of the fonts without the little crown come with your Canva account. They come with your Canva subscription. You can use them for your designs. So we'll just pick one for right now that's free just so we can look at it. Say we want to pick this one, Alice. And then if we want to adjust so that we don't have that one little word on the line, we can adjust our text box just very easily with these drag and drop handles. And these guides light up to help us center our text really easily. Another option to center our text would be position and center, which is already grayed out because it's already in the center. But if it wasn't and I was had it way over here and I hit center, it'll center it for me. Now you can make sure everything's nice and straight no matter what. So now that I've got the font I like there, I can also grab that font for here. And it was called Alice. And it does put the fonts that you're working with up at the top. So that's really convenient. You don't have to remember them. You've got recently used. 
and then this section up here at the top. And then maybe I want to make this a little bigger because it's kind of close to that. I could just change the font size by hitting plus and make it bigger. Maybe I want to move it. Oops. Make sure you're on top. Make sure you've got, see when I hover over whatever I'm going to select. Gets that blue box around it. You can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move it around. And now I might want to change this as well, just so all my fonts match. So the next thing we're going to go over is how to put images into our templates. And everywhere that there's not an image, there'll either be an image here or there'll be this box to represent an image. And they go all the way through the template, this little clouds and sky type boxes. And these make it really easy to crop your images exactly how you want to without having to have some kind of fancy design software where you have to go in, crop your image, then put it into the design, and it's not easy at all. It's a bunch of extra steps, and you don't want to have to do that. So these little boxes are pretty magical, and I will show you how to use them next. So with every one of our templates, you will receive this image collection, which is the stock images that we've used. These are from sites like Pexels, Unsplash. You can use these images for free in any of your personal or commercial works from these websites. And you don't have to pay anything additional for the license. I would recommend just reading the license over again if you go to Unsplash or Pexels. Another one is Pixabay. And any free or any collection of stock images that you come across, just make sure that you're familiar with the terms of how you can use it and how you can't use it just so you don't get in trouble. But we do offer these image collections for you to be able to download. You don't have to create an account, you don't have to do anything. So right now we're just going to go to the Unsplash collection. And this is the Eucalyptus collection. It uses the stock images that we've used inside that collection, the template collection. You don't have to use these, but if you don't feel like looking for a bunch of new images or you don't have any or you really liked, you kind of bought it for the look of the images, because let's be real, like the pictures do make the template. So if you come through and you see one you really like and you want to use it, then you can go ahead and click on that. And you don't even have to download it. You don't need to do that additional step. Just clutter up your computer with downloads and I'll show you how to get it on there without even downloading. So just hit the plus sign so that you expand the picture to its greatest potential. Right click and copy the image. And then you can come right back into Canva, into your Canva account, onto your template, and just control V, or I think it's command V for the Mac, or just paste, it might be a right click and paste your image into your template, and it'll just appear kind of in the middle like this. And all you have to do is drag it right over that box and it just kind of sucks it in. It's really cool. So you don't have to do anything. And as you can see, it's cropped that image. Now maybe you just don't really like the positioning of this, like the base is kind of small for the space. It's kind of, it doesn't look the best. So all you have to do is double click on it and you'll be able to see the original image and then a little darker where it will show up. And you can adjust it left and right. And you can also make it bigger by pulling on these handles. So maybe you just want that base to kind of fill up space more. Click off and you'll be able to see your new crop. And that's how you're going to add an image. It works the same for every single time that you see one of these, even if it's a different font shape or a letter or a smear or any of those shapes. Anytime you see that, it just lets you put your own image right in. If you want to upload an image from your own computer, you already have your brand photos, you got them taken, you got them somewhere else. You can go right to Uploads and Upload Media. And you can navigate to your device, Facebook, Google Drive, Instagram, or your Dropbox. And then you'll be able to go through and upload something like you would any other website. And it'll show up right in your Uploads folder. And you can again just drag it and drop it. And it'll just pop right in there. And again, crop it exactly the way that you'd like to get it exactly how you'd like it to look. And you'll just go through and you'll do those three steps for pretty much every template. So the last thing that you'll probably want to do with your Instagram posts or your Pinterest pins or whatever you've created from a template is to download it so you can actually use it. 
So to do that, we'll go to download up here. And usually it will suggest a type of file depending on what we're using. So if we're making a video, it'll often suggest an MP4. If we're making a flyer, it'll suggest PDF. If we're making a graphic, it will suggest an SVG, and so on. So we pretty much what it's suggesting is usually always correct. You could also download these as JPEG for Instagram, but since Instagram is completely fine with the PNG, which is a higher quality image, <coughs> excuse me, then you might as well just use that. So I like to leave it on PNG. Now I've had people ask me, well, what if I don't want to download all of these? Maybe I just want to make one post today. I don't want to have to download the whole set every single time. What do I do? So what you'll want to do to get one page, this is a 10 page template, so you'll be able to select pages and you can just pick the one you want. Maybe we just want page three today. That's our post for today. We're not big into social media scheduling, so we just want that one page. Then we could hit done and we could hit download and it would come down to us as just that one file. If we want the entire thing, we could hit all pages and by default it's on all pages and then we would want to download. And it will download this for us as a zip file. So make sure that you do understand that you'll have to unzip that file once you download it to your computer. Most of us are familiar with how to do that. If you're not, you can always Google that and find out how to unzip the folder. And then you'll be able to use all of your separate templates. Now you can continue editing if you're not done yet, or you can go back to your home page and you can work on another design. So I do want to mention, and I think it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyways, you can obviously edit any of the text the same way that you would in any other program. You just double click on it, highlight it, put what you want. Just thought I'd mention that just in case that someone might have not realized that they could edit that text, but you always, always can. So there you have it. That is how to simply edit a Canva template and kind of going through the basics of how to open your account. To recap, you can either open a new account or use your existing account. If you're open a new account, you absolutely do not need the paid version to edit any of our templates. We've also shown you how to change the colors of your elements and change the colors of your text, as well as change your fonts, how to type and edit your text, just like any other text editor. And last but not least, how to bring in stock photos and upload them and bring them into the editor without having to download them to your computer. And then also how to take photos that were already on your computer and upload them into Canva. And we've also shown you how to download your full template or to download your template one slide at a time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more templates like this. Let us know what else you want to see. Thanks for watching.